Star Fox 64 was a huge favorite of mine on the Nintendo 64. The voice acting, graphics, and gameplay were out of this world. And though the voice acting isn't really much of a deal anymore, and graphics have aged a bit, but the gameplay still holds true. But this gameplay with its all range mode and multiplayer was not meant to originate on the 64. Instead, according to Miyamoto himself, Star Fox 64 is only 10% new gameplay. All the rest was borrowed from older games. But where did it all come from? Well, on this episode of Beta 64, we're going to look at the complete development of Star Fox 64. Now, for those of you who have seen my video on the development of Star Fox 2, you probably already have an idea of where this gameplay came from. If you haven't seen it though, I highly suggest hitting the i button or clicking the link in the description to watch my video on its development, as this video that you're watching now will discuss what happened after the SNES sequel's cancellation. Don't worry though, I'll be right here when you get back. Alright, let's recap a bit. Let's start off in May of 1995. At that time, everyone was excited to see the sequel of Star Fox make its way to E3. However, when the time came, no sequel was found. Instead, Nintendo showed off the final hardware of the then called Ultra 64, as well as the Virtual Boy and Donkey Kong Country 2. Following the show, many wondered the state of Star Fox 2, and in Electronic Gaming Monthly magazine, the editor of the letter section said the game was cancelled. But that wasn't the case. Nintendo put out a statement saying the game had not been cancelled, and that its release would come in the first half of 1996, and that was the last we ever heard of the game. While we never got an official cancellation, it was assumed when Nintendo showed off Star Fox 64 in early 1996. And they were right. But enough of Star Fox 2. Star Fox 64 was conceived when Miyamoto found that he could create a much better game with the new, powerful Nintendo 64 hardware. So he cancelled the SNES sequel in favor of a Nintendo 64 version. In an interview, he mentioned that the entire game was 60% from Star Fox 1, 30% from Star Fox 2, which includes all range mode, Star Wolf scenarios, and multiplayer, and only 10% of Star Fox 64 was entirely new. Of this 10%, one of the most interesting additions at the time was full voice acting, something that was unprecedented for Nintendo. According to an Iwata ass, writing the script for the game was basically just a lot of trial and error, and after showing off the script to Shigesato Itoi, well known for being the lead designer of the Mother series, Itoi said that the script resembled a historical drama, much to the writer Takano's surprise. While writing the script, Takano wanted to use tried and true phrases in order to make the game have a bigger impression on the fans. Phrases like, I keep waiting for you, Star Fox, were used, even though Takano did find them a bit corny. Originally, in order to make Fox sound cooler, the writers were going to have him say things like, I guess it's your turn to be thankful. But they felt that it was too showy for this character, so they decided to give these lines to Falco. Takano knew that once these lines were recorded, there was no turning back. So in order to keep all of his bases covered, they came up with every single line they could possibly conceive. That means there were a ton of voice clips that were never used in the final game. And speaking of things that were never used in the game, according to the same interview, there were originally going to be multiple underwater stages in addition to Aqua's Ocean, the only underwater mission in the game. However, these additional stages were removed because the development team found that they caused the tempo of the game to suffer. Takano was a bit bitter about this removal, and because of that, he had Falco say this line. This thing will never hold together. There are multiple instances of this happening during development, like when Takano was playing an early build of the game, he kept losing and couldn't make it past a level. So in order to give himself some encouragement, he came up with Peppy's line, Never give up! Trust your instinct! For the character's speaking animations, Miyamoto modeled them after puppets because of his fascination with English puppet dramas. Plus, doing this dramatically reduced the work required to animate the characters, which is always a good thing. Now, for those of you who live in other countries besides the US or Japan, you may recognize Star Fox 64 as Lilat Wars instead. The reason for this name change is because of a German company named Star Vox. And due to the fear of legal disputes that could delay the game, Nintendo chose instead to just change the name to Lilat Wars in some territories. 
During development, a couple videos were released to show off Star Fox 64 in its unfinished state. The earliest of these is from E3 1996, roughly a year before release. Starting from the beginning, you get a brief, literally half-second look at the game's planets arranged in a completely different way from the final game. No idea why they show this for only half a second, or if it means anything, but it is very interesting. Next we get to see an intro of the first level of the game, Corneria. The intro is shorter than the final version, and the intercom overlay is at the center of the screen instead of on the left side. After this we get to the gameplay, which starts out immediately over land instead of over water like in the final game. The first obvious change you may notice is the on-screen HUD, which went through a lot of revisions. The HUD in this footage isn't even the earliest version of it. If you look at these screenshots, the only thing you'll see is a very minimal shield meter. Not only that, in these same images you can still see a ton of early stuff that even the footage from E3 doesn't have like this robot boss who you would have fought in Corneria in all range mode. But enough about the screenshots, let's get back to the footage. The interesting thing about the HUD in this footage is how it doesn't show the health of the boss or the health of Falco, Peppy, or Slippy. The next obvious difference you probably already noticed is Corneria itself. It's so washed out, it looks like it's covered in snow. And that's not just because the footage is like 20 plus years old. If you look at the screenshots of the same stage, it looks the same. In fact, the only reason we know that this is specifically Corneria is because of the tower at the beginning, because it's exactly the same except for the direction it's leaning. Perhaps the most interesting thing about this early stage is how the boss is right in the center of the city, and though it fights the same way as the final game, it seems to be shaded a brighter red compared to the final version. Some other miscellaneous differences include red lasers for the player, which weren't in the final game, no special effects for collecting a laser upgrade, and no effects when performing a barrel roll. The next round of footage we have is dated December 6th, 1996, roughly six months after the last footage we saw from E3. This video actually shows us an early version of the game's intro, so let's take a look at it piece by piece. First off, the cameras highlighting both Fox and Peppy are at different angles, and the sequence where the R wings take off is different as well. But something more interesting is the fact that the Star Fox logo is missing from the top wing of the Great Fox. Either that, or maybe just the video is so low res that we can't see it. The HUD in this footage is different from the last revision we saw as well. The player's shield is now in the upper left hand corner, with the hit counter next to it. The boost meter looks to be roughly the same as the last footage though, except for the addition of the text boost on top. The Star Fox team heads to other areas in this footage as well. The first we'll look at is Titania. I found two changes in this section. One, the sand is a lighter color compared to the final game, and second, Peppy says something that's not in the final game. When I hopefully translated this correctly, I found that Peppy said, I remember this from 10 years ago. Now what exactly does he remember from 10 years ago? Dunno. Nothing even close to this line is said in Titania in the final game. Next up is Zonus. In the final game, the planet was turned from an exciting beach getaway to a disgusting toxic waste dump. But in the trailer, Zonus is in peak tropical condition. Not only that, but during the footage in this mission, an unknown character appears on the transmission, but their portrait looks to be corrupted. Like, not on purpose. Something looks to have went wrong when trying to load it. So who was this character? Well, the only hint we have is the text that appears, which when translated says, I found Star Fox, Captain. So very likely this character was a lesser enemy who was reporting to the final boss, who is the captain of the Sadu Marine. And speaking of the captain, his early portrait looks way different from the final version. In fact, I'd say it's creepier. Like, a lot creepier. We also get a quick glimpse at the early multiplayer mode, which has a different colored health bar, a bigger ship icon on the radar, and also is missing the boost meter. Some other various changes I saw in this footage is the Meteo Crusher shooting bubbles in its first stage instead of green laser-like things. The barrel roll still doesn't have all the effects the final has, and there's this strange L power-up that you can collect, which might have been an early laser upgrade. Alright, let's shift our focus to unused objects, specifically, unused graphics. The first we'll look at is a copyright graphic for the title screen, which appeared in early screenshots. It was never used in the final game, and is dated 1996, one year before the game was actually released. Speaking of graphics left over from early builds, pretty much all the pieces of the early HUD we saw are still present in the game's files. There are a ton of these images, so let's look at a few at a time and an early screenshot where they are visible. First are these numbers and symbols, which were used for the hit counter, lives, and basically anything involving counting in the HUD. Next is the text bomb, 
shield, boss, hit, and pause. While I could find images for hit, shield, and boss, I couldn't find any for bomb or pause. Now we have four letters which each represent a member of the Star Fox team. Fox, Falco, Peppy, and Slippy. These would have been right next to the shield circle, as you can see in the screenshot. I don't know what they were used for, but they do appear in several screenshots. A couple early boost meters are also found in the game's files, one of which has a boss meter attached to it. But I couldn't find any in-game images that showed this boss health and boost meter together. Some other HUD images include an early life icon, an early bomb icon, an early incoming transmission signal, and some outliner with the word charge on it. Other than the early HUD and copyright logo, there's one other thing we found that's unused in Star Fox 64. In the 1.0 version of the game when fighting on bolts, if you haven't destroyed all of the barriers yet, Star Wolf and some enemies will have a shield around them. However, the player never had access to this shield. At least not until someone found a way to activate it. Apparently, you could originally get a shield that surrounded your R-Wing, and colliding with anything wouldn't have inflicted any damage. While the shield was cut from the final game, it was later re-added in Star Fox 64 3D as a multiplayer power-up. So that's the beta of Star Fox 64. While it's a shame that Star Fox 2 never made its way to store shelves, it's nice to see that Star Fox 64 incorporated so many of the scrap game's ideas. Looking at the beta footage, I really didn't feel like I was missing out on anything. In fact, really nothing I could have found would have kept this game from being the classic it was always meant to be. So this has been Beta 64 with the Star Fox 64 Beta. Thanks for watching.